Hello, Delaware Food Pharmacy families. Thank you for joining us for another DASH Diet video. My name is Shannon, and I'm a registered diet technician and chef. Today, we're going to continue to take it slow and roast a whole chicken in a crock pot. We're gonna roast the chicken in this. Um, and, and I didn't know you could do this. Um, this is news to me too. Um, so I always thought roasting you had to do in the oven, and I've done that, but this was really great. Again, you can just leave it and it won't overcook, it won't burn. However, um, because you want to roast it, you almost have to make like a roasting rack in there. Some crock pots come with it, mine did not, and you can also buy them. But um, I just make my own. I use tin foil. So the first time when I read what to do, they said to make tin foil balls, and I found that that didn't work as well for me. It's like actually trying to make like rack pieces. So I fold it in half, kind of roll it up, and kind of bend it up the sides because you're going to put your chicken on top of it. And I'm going to do actually four of these. So this is what it should look like, kind of like like an imaginary rack. It kind of looks like like ribs on a person. That's okay. Anyhow, the first time that I did it too, the chicken stuck to it. So I would just recommend any kind of non-stick spray, just giving it a quick coating so that it doesn't stick to the actual tin foil because this chicken that I'm going to put in here is not going to get super browned. So you're going to need to lift it out and put it underneath your broiler for a little bit to get that skin a little bit crisped up. And honestly, the first time I did it, it just like fell apart and it had tin foil stuck to it. So I'm just giving you pointers I've learned. So now we're going to make kind of like a, a rub of sorts to put on the chicken. I'm going to use my dry ingredients first and we're going to use some low uh, sodium adobo. Um, about, I think I did about a tablespoon of this. No, two. No, two. One tablespoon should do it. Yeah. One tablespoon. Okay, so we'll put that in. Um, then we're going to add in some garlic that I've already chopped. So you guys know how to do that. Again, if you wanted to use the pre-canned kind, oh, you wouldn't get any of this. You wouldn't get any of the skin on the pre-canned kind. That's a plus. Put that over there. Um, and then I did smoke paprika because it's what I had, but you can absolutely use like regular paprika. It's not going to matter. It gives it a little more color and I just like the smoke flavor on it. So again, whatever you have on hand, I'm going to go with another tablespoon of this. And every time I do the tablespoon measures, I take this part off because it will take me too long. Um, oh, and look, it doesn't fit. So we'll use the half, half ones. Okay. So we'll do one and three teaspoons is a tablespoon so this is a half so we're actually going to do six of them okay five and six i know a tablespoon is always more than i think it is um and then we're going to do onion powder okay same thing here onion powder and we'll, we'll do the same thing because the oh we can pour it oh it's good it's a good thing i can think jeez all right we'll do a tablespoon of this in here Pour it right in. And the last one is the Italian seasoning, okay? Um, and there's not much in this, so I'm just gonna just throw it across into the wind and just pour it in there, okay? Um, last thing that we're gonna add is a little bit of olive oil. The olive oil will help it spread about, and also um, it will help it crisp up a little bit. Um, and, and by a little bit, I mean really not much. Like you're still gonna wanna put it underneath the broiler to get it browned, but it will help and it helps distribute this. And it's about two tablespoons of that. And I will use my measuring tools again for this. One and two. Okay. All right. And then we're going to whisk this together. All of our ingredients are in here. So we're going to whisk it together. Okay. It should form like a, a paste of sorts. And I'm, this is going to be maybe a little bit different that we have a, a whole chicken here. So you want to get a chicken that is between three and five pounds because it has to fit in this container. Um, and so this is our, our chicken. Here he is. He's all cleaned. I took him out of his package and I took out his giblets. I'm actually going to like get my hands dirty and put him right in here. All right. So he's going to go in here and I'm going to coat him with stuff. Seasoning. Make him taste like stuff. I'll get him 
coated. Make sure you wash your hands good after this one. We want to make sure we get some nice color on them. Again, don't worry too much about the, the liquid. That will all come. Once he's cooked, the, um, the juices will release. But it should almost look like this, like this paste kind of look. Now, I obviously have to wash my hands, and we'll put them in the cooker. Okay, so he looks seasoned, which is what we like. Um, and I'm just going to push them aside a little bit so we can get the crock pot in the center. Okay, and we're going to put him right on the rack. I'm going to try to use my tongs with this so I don't get my hands disgusting again. Um, but again, I can, I can get him almost, I want to put him breast side up, okay, so that we can get him out a little bit easier. He'll go right on top, and there's more, there's more stuff. So we can take the stuff and again spread it on him. So that he gets a lot of good flavor going on there. Hello, Mr. Chicken. Okay. Or Mrs. Chicken. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Right. And then, once we get him nice and seasoned, we'll put our lid back on. And for any chicken, you always want to put it on high first for at least an hour. Um, and then you can change it to low if you want to take more time, but just for food safety, it should go on high for the first hour. I just leave it on high for four hours, and it seems to work out pretty decent every time. Okay, so our chicken has been in here about four hours, and here is the moment of truth. I honestly have no idea how this is going to work. Um, it's done, but it doesn't look like roasted, so because of... I like the crispy skin and you're used to that brown color. We're going to take this guy out. We'll take the top off first. Try not to steam. Always like a fish. So we'll try not to steam ourselves. Um, and now you can see there's, there's broth in there and everything's ready to go. I'm going to try to take him out and put him in my Pyrex. Um, but I have no idea if he's going to fall apart. Um, please don't fall apart on me, Mr. Chicken. So hopefully I'll, it'll work. Okay, um, and again, this is all, oh, come here, chicken, come here. Oh, no, his leg, his legs fell off. <laughs> well, this isn't too bad, because we can put the bottom half of them in. Oh, we can make this work. Uh, well, we're going to have to make it work like this. We'll piece them back together. But it's really like, it's legitimately, the bones are falling off, so I guess it's falling off the bone. I guess that's what you're, it's very, very good. But he sort of looks like, he's like, he's a good looking chicken. He's just a little bit bow-legged. We'll call him a bow-legged chicken. <laughs> and I'm going to put him under the broiler to kind of crisp up the skin. Okay, so he's browned up. He looks a little bit better. looks more like a roasted chicken. Um, I did take out the, um, the liquid at the bottom. This is broth, so I'll probably make chicken soup with this. Um, the first time I made this, I made chicken soup, and I also made chicken tacos. But if you just want to cut it down and eat it as is, you know, here are your breasts. The legs will obviously come right off because you all saw them fall. So they're right there. Um, but if we want to cut into the breast, I'm going to unpin my wings. There it goes. It was pinned together so we'd look prettier for the picture. Um, and we can just cut right into the breast like this. And usually when you cut them, you cut what's called on the bias, um, which is kind of sideways and against the grain. Um, and then these pieces here, you can have these. Gosh, you can do anything with this. Um, again, soups, chicken salad, on top of salads, chicken tacos, or just plain with maybe some mashed potatoes and some veggies, and you're good to go. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. I hope it was helpful. In our next video, we'll be creating more Dash Diet meals. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to your care team at Christiana.